Come on, admit it. You're going to miss him. In his short six months as White House press secretary, Sean Spicer provided comic relief in politically divisive times. Let's put it this way. If the Trump administration was a sitcom, Sean Spicer was the wacky neighbor, like Alice Kravitz of Bewitched, or Kramer from Seinfeld. Let me know what it is, and I'll order it. Yep, that was Spicer. He burst on the scene right after the inauguration to tell us what we thought we saw, we didn't see it all. Photographs of the inaugural proceedings were intentionally framed in a way to minimize the enormous support that had gathered on the National Mall. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. He was angry and feisty in an ill-tailored suit. He was like nothing we had ever seen from a White House press secretary before, and a star was born. From humble beginnings as the Easter Bunny at the White House annual Easter egg hunt during the George W. Bush administration, Spicer rose quickly to stardom and he never disappointed. Like the time he wore the American flag upside down. Your upside down. John Roberts always helping with the fashion tips. <laughs> it's still upside you down. You want to put dress card on? <laughs> or the time he just walked out of a press briefing, much to the shock of the press corps. Sean! Come on, Sean! 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 What about the Putin call? Sean! Sit right here, wait. Sit, let's see, let's see. No one leaves. No one leaves. Sit, wait, let's see. No one leaves. Sit and wait. But that daily intrigue, drama, and comedy of the White House press briefings was must-see daytime TV, and Sean Spicer soared to number one in the ratings, and Saturday Night Live was quick to respond. Before we begin, I know that myself and the press have gotten off to a rocky start. All right, all right, all right, all right. When you're a man, and Melissa McCarthy turns out to be the perfect person to portray you, you may want to reevaluate some things. Is it possible that Donald Trump, who loves to brag about his ratings on The Apprentice, didn't like Sean Spicer's new fame? Think about it. First, Trump canceled the televised daily press briefings, and then he replaced Spicer with the somewhat less exciting Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and finally, he brought in Tony the Mooch Scaramucci, who is the anti-Spicer. He's as different from Sean Spicer as you can get. And in the end, it seems like the Mooch was brought in to wax Spicer, although Spicer claims he quit. But don't feel too bad for Sean Spicer. Past White House press secretaries have done pretty well for themselves. Take Robert Gibbs, for example, the former White House press secretary under President Obama. He is now executive vice president of global communications for McDonald's. That comes with a supersized salary. I see similar success for Sean Spicer, who has become the most popular White House press secretary ever. And I have the perfect company. I'm Larry Menti. See you again next week.